A senior developer job is very different from a junior developer job. Unfortunately, most guides online help you prepare for a junior software developer job interview and not for a senior one. You'll find tips like learning all kinds of difficult algorithms by heart or learning answers to tricky coding questions. Having that in-depth knowledge is important, but if you only focus on that aspect when preparing for a senior developer interview, you're only going to get the job. So what should you do in order to prepare for a job interview like that? Well, that's what I'm going to cover today. Some of you complained about the second camera angle I used in some of my recent videos. I'm not ready to give up yet. I want my second camera angle! So, what do you think of this? Or this? Or this? Or this? One hour later. Or this? Before I dive into the actual interview tips, a more general tip is to build an online presence for yourself. You can do that with social media, but an even better option is to create your own website. It's more personal than just a LinkedIn profile and that helps you stand out more. Hostinger, the sponsor of this video, makes this really easy for you. Hostinger is an all-in-one website hosting platform with over 1.2 million users from countries all over the world. They have several packages, but in particular, the premium shared hosting package is really nice. You get lots of features with this one. You can create up to 100 websites, you get free email, up to 100 email accounts. There's unlimited bandwidth, unlimited databases. They have extremely fast service, 99.9% .9 uptime, 24 seven chat, and a 30 day money back guarantee. You can use WordPress to build your site and the hosting plans are optimized to running WordPress. So it's going to run smoothly, but I personally prefer their drag and drop website builder. It's very simple and intuitive. I'll show you how it works in a minute. Because of Black Friday, Hostinger now only costs $2.49 if you opt for the four-year plan. This is a great deal. And the nice thing is you also get a free domain and SSL included with that. So in order to get set up, go to hostinger.com slash Codes and then click on the add to cart button here to select premium shared hosting. And then when you order it, make sure you enter the coupon code Arion codes, and this is going to give you an additional 10% off. Once you're in the hosting platform, it's really easy to get set up. So I'm going to click on start now. I want to create a new website. I'm going to select the hosting or website builder like so. And now I'm going to claim a free domain because this is part of my premium hosting package. As the domain name, I'm going to use arionsportfolio.com. Now that I have a domain, I can start building my website. So I'm going to click on start building. There's loads of templates available in order to get started quickly. So I'm going to click on portfolio and then I'm going to pick one of these sites in order to get started by building my own portfolio. So for example, I like this one. So I simply pick and then I say start building. It's really easy to start building my website. So for example, this text, I can edit it and then I can paste in my own text, add some basic formatting here and let me also change the name here. And let's change the color to something else. I like orange because of course orange is the Dutch color. So let me just pick that one. There we go. And let me also change this image to something else. I'm going to pick this image, which is me without a beard. That's a long time ago actually. Once I'm ready, I can press go live. And now my website is published. So if I go to view your site, then you see that I now have a portfolio site that I built literally in a couple of minutes. Hostinger offers more than just website hosting. For example, they also have really fast VPS hosting that you can use, for example, to host your API at a very affordable price. Go to hostinger.com slash codes to check them out. And don't forget to apply the Arian codes coupon for an additional 10% off. I've also put the links in the description of this video. There's different levels or types of developers. The most common types you'll see in job openings are junior, medior, senior, and lead developers or engineers. And then you have more exotic jobs like the software ninjas, development gurus, and code monkeys. Whether you should apply to those jobs, well, that's between you and your dignity. A big difference between a junior and a senior developer is that the junior developer generally needs more specific instructions and works on more focused areas of the code. They know a limited number of programming languages and they generally won't be involved that much in designing the software. A senior developer writes great code, knows about design principles, patterns, and software architecture. They might also know more advanced things such as how to set up a cloud infrastructure, how to set up software testing, or they're involved in figuring out what third-party technologies to rely on. 
A lead developer is a senior developer with management responsibilities, leading a team of developers, managing a software project that involves different stakeholders, coordinating the work with the company management, and so on. That isn't to say that a senior developer doesn't do any management at all, it's just that, in general, the focus for a senior developer lies more on the technology and less on management. It's also not always that clear cut though. For example, some companies might not have lead developers, but they'll have senior developers who also do management. And the transition point from junior to media to senior developer is also different depending on the company. Simply using years of experience doesn't really work because it very much depends on what you did in those years. So measuring seniority is hard and it involves many things. And that means that the interview process is much more involved and less standardized than when you're hiring a junior developer. Especially at bigger companies, junior developers might be hired via online coding competitions, hackathons, etc. For senior developers, you'll have several interviews to measure software design skills, in-depth knowledge of programming, how you solve problems, your communication skills, how you operate in a team and how you manage other developers, whether you are fit for the company culture, etc. The interview process for hiring a senior developer is expensive. The company spends a lot of time on each potential hire because hiring a senior developer is a long-term investment. If you make the wrong choice, it has a much bigger impact than when you hire the wrong junior developer. And this is true both for the person that is hired as well for the company that makes the hire. And that leads to my first tip, which is to think long-term. The hiring process is a qualification process. Both you and the company are trying to establish whether you're a good fit for them and vice versa. The sooner you figure that out, the better. The goal is not to get hired wherever, the goal is to find a place that helps you grow. You need to think long-term. If you apply to a more senior role, you have to make sure you understand what you're looking for in terms of the company culture, what kinds of products or service the company sells and whether that makes you happy, and whether the company offers something that aligns well with your own learning goals. If you're a junior, you're a bit more flexible and that you're going to learn a crazy amount of things anyway. So if you've only done front-end development and you'd like to learn more about the back-end, applying to a senior front-end developer job is probably not the right choice for you. It helps if you do a bit of research on a company and the position they offer before you go into their hiring process. There's no need to apply if you already know it's not a fit for you. Check out the LinkedIn page of the company, some of their employees, go through the company's website, check out how they're being presented in the press, check out what they're posting on social media. All of this helps you get a clearer view of the company and whether you're going to be happy there in the long term. If you think long term, this allows you to more quickly filter out the companies that are not fit for you, and then you'll have more space to focus on the ones that are, and that increases your chance of success. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like. That helps me grow this channel in the long term. A great senior developer has a well-developed skill for looking at things from the bird's eye level. Make sure you show that you have that skill. Here are a few examples of how that skill manifests itself. You should be able to quickly design an overall system without diving too much into the details. You should be able to make connections and tie current problems to things you've learned in the past. If you're asked to talk about a possible solution to a problem during the interview, link it back to things you've done before. You should be able to quickly gauge a piece of code in terms of how it's set up and where potential issues in design might lie. And related to that, you should be able to take an existing piece of code and quickly come up with a plan of how the code should be changed to support a new feature. If you want to learn more specifically about those last two points, I've created a free workshop on code diagnosis that helps you pick out issues in existing code more quickly and more consistently. The workshop is based on my own experience, reviewing tons of code and trying to do that efficiently while still finding the problems fast. You can sign up at arian.codes diagnosis. It contains a lot of practical advice and it goes through examples from a few well-known Python packages that you might actually use right now. So arian.codes diagnosis, the link is also in the description of this video. For junior developers, it's really important to show that you have particular technical skill. You have experience with Django or with Python, or you know how to build a web application with React. For senior developers, the specific technologies are less important. You need to show that you have a broad technical skill set. You can show this by talking about past projects and making sure that you mention a wide variety of different projects to show your general knowledge. 
you can prepare this by already creating a list before the interview starts. This list will probably contain more detailed things you would not put on your CV. And that also gives you the opportunity to over deliver. Next to technical knowledge, a senior developer should have some knowledge about development processes and managing other developers. Some of the questions you can think about to prepare for the interview are things like, how regularly do you schedule meetings with your team members? What metrics do you use to monitor your team's performance? Which tests do you think are most important before deploying a new system or feature? And what tools and techniques do you use when reviewing someone else's code? You might also get more management questions, even though that's more the area of the lead developer. For example, what's your onboarding process for a new junior developer? How do you handle disagreements on technology between team members? How do you deal with a junior developer who keeps questioning your decisions? You hit them on the head with a mechanical keyboard, of course. Or how do you give feedback to other developers in your team? I recently did a video about that, by the way. There's a link at the top. Especially as a senior developer, it helps if you show high level thinking and you're not just focusing on the technical details of your work. Some of the things to think about are, how do you stay up to date on current technologies? How do you balance using stable but old libraries versus moving to new and potentially better but also less stable libraries? How do you deal with failure? Can you give an example? What was the last project you worked on? If you were able to start over again with that project, what would you do differently? Have you ever identified a potential business problem and then proactively implemented a solution? Or where would you like to be in two to three years time? And here's a bonus tip. There's more to you than just your work experience and your education. The older you get, the less important your education becomes and the more you learn about yourself, about what makes you happy and what makes you special. You'll have things you're passionate about and there's often interesting links between your passions and your work that might not be directly obvious. For example, one of my hobbies is playing and recording music. But that hobby means I've grown creative skills, problem solving skills, why am I not getting any sound out of that amplifier? And the skill to eat ramen every day. Because as a musician, you don't have any money to buy real food. Talking about these kinds of connections show that you're able to think outside of the box, especially for more senior positions. This is a great skill to have because you'll often need to come up with a solution to some complex problem that's not going to be immediately obvious. And this is exactly the kind of stuff that's great to share on your own website, for which you can use Hostinger to get started quickly. You should be able to make connections and the type You need to show that you have a broad technical skill set. Skill set? What's that? I recently did a I recently did a video on before you apply to that senior developer. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you realize how much more there is to a senior developer. I don't know what I have today. The cat crop the krullen van de trap. The cat crop the krullen van de trap. It's impossible. Okay, let's try this again. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you realize how much more there is to a senior developer job and what you can do to prepare yourself better for an interview. Of course, before you apply to that job, you need to acquire the right skills. So you might want to check out this video next, where I give you eight tips to help you develop those skills more quickly. Thanks for watching and see you next week.